So we're putting a chart up there that shows the PMIs trailing off, particularly with respect to manufacturing. From Portugal's point of view, as you look at Europe, are we seeing a trailing off of growth, and how much of it is because of exports and trade issues? Uh, we are seeing some uh, uh, signs of, uh, uh, in terms of European growth, of a smoothing of the, of the growth, while we were seeing in the beginning of uh, the year and last year uh, signs of an acceleration. But I think it's too early to... to to be very definitive about it. With Portugal, we have exactly the opposite. We just have a revision of our growth of last year, a upward revision, and the prospects for this year is to grow above the European Union average, so are good prospects for the country, especially because its growth focus on exports and on growth of investment, which means that it's uh, quite sustainable. And that was my question. How much of your growth is dependent upon exports? And where are the exports to? Are they within Europe or are they more broad? Uh, in, in the case of Portugal, a big part is uh, with the European Union market. But what we have uh, managed to do in the last uh, five years is to continue to gain market share in the European market. But also uh, there's the diversification, namely with uh, countries that speak Portuguese, with Angola and uh, Brazil and uh, South uh, America in general. And we are having a very interesting performance with the United States as well. So of course uh, we are worried, like everyone in the, in the in the world and in Europe these days, about maintaining uh, an open route as uh, we have uh, managed to do, for instance, with the trade agreement with Canada. That was a very positive move. Uh, we, we also saw in the PMI data today that uh, new export orders uh, fell the most in about five years. Uh, it, how do you view that? Short or long-term impact from trade? I, I think that uh, that's the, the thing with, the, with trade. It has a, a specific uh, short-term impact that happens for sure, but it, it can have long-term impacts that are negative for the well-being of everyone. So I think that uh, the, the signs and doubts that we are having about trade, both of course across the Atlantic, but also with the Brexit and uh, other situations, are uh, having uh, already some impact in terms of the expectations, in terms of decisions that are delayed and so on. What we want is to combat that and I think the European Union has shown some uh, signs both with Canada and the uh, negotiations with Japan as well. And I think it should go forward with the negotiations with Mercosul, for instance, with Brazil, Argentina and so on to give a different perspective. I think many countries in the world, if you look at uh, India or uh, China or even Brazil, are giving signs that they want more openness, not less openness. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, it's a, a very interesting opportunity for industry in Europe, but also for industry in the US, to uh, entail in, in new trade with these countries. Yeah. So I think we should not focus too much on the past and on the deficits that we have. We should look forward and see where our economies, the developed economies, can be more competitive and can move forward. So that's sort of the global outlook, but regionally uh, there are also issues when it comes to Italy. So the OECD outlined uh, concerns about Italy in their report yesterday, saying that the recent increase in risk spreads on Italian government bonds and the associated decline in the equity prices of Italian banks provide a demonstration of the pace at which continued vulnerabilities in the euro area can re-emerge. Further reforms are needed to reduce the risk of contagion, enhance resilience, and straighten the fiscal framework. How much of a threat is Italy to your economy? I don't think that Italy is not our major partner. It's Spain that is doing quite well. And it's also Germany and France. But of course, Italy uh, is a big economy in the European Union and should be a focus of concern. What I see is that the European Union institutions are more resilient are better prepared now, but of course Italy is a big country. In the perspective of Portugal, I think we had the revisions of our number in a better perspective. We have today a Portuguese firm that is doing an IPO, a technological firm that is going to be on the stock exchange here in New York, which is a fantastic news for the country as well. We already have big firms that are worth five billion, but this one is going to be worth close to five billion, hmm. and it's a technological company. And we are having uh, several new technological companies in that area, which means that this new surge of growth that Portugal is having, and mostly growth on exports, 
is coming from different sectors from the past. We still have our traditional sectors that are doing quite well, but we are developing new sectors. And now with companies that are already in the billions, so they are already uh, growing global and growing in a very sustainable way. And this IPO year, we had already several others of Portuguese firms, but it's the first big one of a pure technological company. So it's a very interesting move forward of our country that shows that the links with the U.S. are here to continue. Another uh, big and important economy is the United Kingdom. Uh, and we just had some developments yesterday in Salzburg where we thought maybe there was going to be an agreement. Now it seems that's not so likely. Uh, part of what we heard was from President Macron of France, who really laid down almost a gauntlet saying where he would not go. This is what he said. I do respect the sovereignty of uh, British people, but I do respect the sovereignty of the 27 other members. And they decided to join the European Union with its roots. And I'm here precisely to protect the interests of my citizen, but more broadly, of this common project. So there is no blind deal. So what will be the effect on the broader common project if, in fact, there is what is called a hard Brexit? Uh, does that affect your economy in Portugal? Does it affect the economy of Europe more broadly? I think Brexit is a negative uh, subject. Hard Brexit is worse than a soft Brexit. And I think, of course, an agreement would be the desirable solution. Uh, otherwise, we would have to work on other scenarios. I don't think that we are going to have a disaster, but I think that uh, we should work uh, together putting forward the interests of, of the UK, but putting in the same table the interests of the other 27 economies. And we have to understand that the links that, uh, that connect the European countries and the European Union are quite strong. So disentangling all these uh, knots uh, is going to be a hard uh, process. But we should have an agreement that makes this process a process that gives stability, that gives a yeah. route that investors understand. And this is especially important for the, for the British people, but of course it's important for all of Europe. I think it's important as a symbol as well for the trade around the world. England well, is a very important country. If, if, if we weave sort of the risks we've been talking about, I mean, it's trade, it's Brexit, it's Italy. Those are three very big risks that you feel optimistic about that things will be okay. But you have to be looking at contingency plans and what you do to insulate your economy from the negative side effects. What are they? Our contingency plans are what we have been doing in the last years. We have reduced strongly the deficits, so we have improved growth, but we have focused more growth on investment, on exports, on reinforcing the capability of uh, private firms by deleveraging their indebtment, and by doing exactly that on the, on the public sector as well. And I think that's the way to move forward. But I also see in the world very interesting opportunities. We have uh, had a very important visit uh, last year to, to India with our Prime Minister. Yeah. And what we see is a big economy that is moving forward towards liberalization, more openness. So I don't think that the signs in the world are all negative, but I think the negative ones should be addressed, but should be addressed with responsibility. And I think in the end, that's exactly what the 27 plus one in Europe are doing. Of course, with a lot of bravado in many uh, <laughs> moments, but I think by finding a, a solution will show that the European Union is, is a project to go forward. Yeah. And the United Kingdom is going to be a partner of this European Union for sure because it's a very important country in Europe.